The BBC presents The Day of the Triffids. Right. Now the chain through his arms and the strap round his wrist. How am I supposed to find supplies like this? Chain to a lot of blind men. You'll manage. And here's your area. Made of ale. I shouldn't let your lot get hungry. Some of them are tough. Episode 4, Dead End. The morning after we settled in at Swiss Cottage, I found that the two men who'd been taken ill in the night had died, and that now three more of the party were ill. I made them as comfortable as I could, and we set out to find food. I led the party, still chained to Mac and Alf, and the remainder followed in file, their hands on each other's shoulders. Alf called out the step to stop them falling over each other. Right. Hey. Yeah, pick them up, pick them up. Where are we now, Gov? In a side street running downhill. There should be shops at the bottom. We're wandering around like lost souls. What do you expect? If you'd let me loose, I could drive round till I found a good place and then pick you all up in a truck and bring you along to do the loading. This way's bound to be slow. He's got something there, mate. Aye, an easy getaway. I wouldn't say you're wrong. Suppose I gave you my word. There's no man's word worth toppings. We're in the jungle now. Come on, pick up the step. Left, right, left. Right. We're coming yeah. to a corner. Get ready to turn left. Yeah, when you say. Stop! Oh, oh, boy. Not here. Give us a bit of warning, can't you? Shut up! A hundred yards down the street, there's a group loading a truck. They're outside their area. They aren't our crowd. The man in charge, a red-haired chap, carrying a rifle. Get down! He's seen us. Down! <laughs> what is it? What is it? What's up? What's up? Max had it. Turn back the rest of you and go up the hill as if nothing had happened. Come on, mate, run for it. No, he's coming towards us. Okay, I've undone Max's strap. We're free of him. This way, round the corner. In here. What is it? Gone. Now, down. He'll shoot us all. No, he won't. He only wants me. Oh, yes. Where's the key to these handcuffs? In my pocket. Let's have it. Look, mate. Alf, I'll crack your skull with a chain if you don't hand it over. There you are. Good. Now, keep quiet. What's happening, mate? He's taking a look at Mac lying in the middle of the road. I think he believes that he was the sighted one. God. Now he's following the rest of our lot. They're straggling up the hill. Come on. What? Take my arm. We'll follow him. You'll see us. I've got a stick here. If he thinks we're blind, he won't take any notice of us. That's it. Come on. Okay, you're the boss. It, but keep telling me what's up. It's not knowing that gets me down. He's about 50 yards ahead of us. The others are about 50 yards in front of him on both sides of the road. He is not overtaking them. He wants to see where they're going. So as he can pinch our supplies, I dare say. Something like that. Hello. What is it? One of our chaps is ill. He's staggering, holding his stomach. He's fallen down. What? Come on, keep going. The red-haired man's caught up with him. He's looking down at him. Down, down, he's shooting at us. Not at us. He shot the sick man. Swine. Now he's coming back. Keep going. He's gone past. Oh. Come on. We've got to get a move on if we're going to get the others back to the hotel before they get too dispersed. Do you mean you're not going to leave us? Sorry to disappoint you, Alf. I thought I could when you had me chained, but now I'm free to go. I seem to have been landed with a baby I can't drop. <laughs> Pity old Mac could hear you say that. <laughs> He'd have died a shock. All right, that's the 
the lot of you. I'll feel your way round here to the tailboard. Got the leader, Alf? Okay. Uh, up you go, chum. Uh, uh, follow him on. Uh, that's it. Now, end the next. That's it. Uh, pass right down the car, please. Oh, please, steady. Don't kick the conductor in the teeth. He's doing his best. Yeah, another. Oh, uh, uh, is that the lot, Bill? That's the lot. Tailboard up. Yeah. I'm getting handy at this. <laughs> it's nothing like practice, eh? Let's see if I can get back to the cab on my own. The real wheel. Right. Here's a petrol tank. Oh, 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 that's a step, yes. Okay, on there. How many have we got with us? Fifteen. And twelve women back at the hotel. That's twenty-seven. Four sick makes thirty-one. We was fifty-three four days ago. Four days? Is that all it is? What do you reckon this is we're all getting? I don't know. It's come on too quickly for typhoid. Could be plague. Plague? I don't know. Oh, looks like solving most of our problems, anyhow. That's looking on the bright side with a vengeance. Oh, well, keep cheerful. <laughs> what are we going to try for today? Tin milk, biscuits, candles and paraffin. Oh, we got 40 gallons of paraffin yesterday. We need more, much more. Why? No time to dig. Ah, oh, that... Yes. Not that much, much difference what you do. It's more of a taste than a smell. Yeah. Was you in the war? Uh, no, too young. I never thought the old of London had put me in mind of the fellas gap two days after the battle. Oh, yeah, I'm getting morbid. Where are we going, anyway? Up towards the heath. We haven't tried that yet. Ah, to get a bit of fresh air, too, eh? Yeah, pity it wasn't bank holiday. We could have had a free ride on the dodge. You think of everything. <laughs> <laughs> Not much improvement up here. Ooh. No, there are, there are more dead bodies lying around here than in most places. Yes, it's a shop, okay. Seems to be. Hang on there in the back while I open up shop. Right. Someone's been in before. They haven't taken much. Hmm. The ham's gone off. <laughs> it's here by the cold meat counter. Oh, that's it. <laughs> Stay there while I see what's in the back. Hi there. Attacking the truck. Oh. Jump off and run for it. Come on, quick towards my voice. Come on, come on. By the window. Oh, no. Journey. Bradshaw. Bradshaw. <laughs> Williams. Here. Foster, Higgins, yeah. Travers, <laughs> Kendricott, Charlie's brought it, sir. Forbes, Smith. Here. Yeah. And that's the lot. You, you didn't call my name. Sorry, Lucy. Are there any more women upstairs? Not now. Seven of us, all told. And all my fault. How do you make that? I ought to have known there were Triffids up in the heath. I ought to have taken a Triffid gun up with me. You can't think of everything. Besides, the Triffids only got eight. You know what's taken the others. Yes, I know. Does anyone want anything? Otherwise, I'll go to bed. No, I'm... No, mate, we're okay. We don't need much. That's funny. The clocks, they still go on. Ah, them that's worked by clockwork will, Lucy. Until they're all run down. Hello? Hello? Anyone there? Oh, hello, mate. You woke up at 15. What was that just struck? Hmm? I don't know. It, uh, oh, it must be about uh, 8 o'clock by the, by the feel of the sun. Where is everyone? Cleared off. What? 
That kid Lucy took ill in the night. And the others got the wind up and said the place was unhealthy and they pushed off to find somewhere else. And Lucy? She died about two o'clock. Why didn't you wake me? She was out for the count. See, there wasn't anything you could have done. All the same, I, oh, I hate to think about being alone. I was there. Yes, why? Of course, I hadn't gone. I know, but why not? Don't you think it's unhealthy here? I think everywhere's unhealthy. Besides, it, it didn't seem like the push off without saying. But what do we do now? We have some breakfast. Then we make for Westminster. To find your girlfriend, right? Dead right. Huh. Huh. Yes, you've got a funny way of putting things sometimes. Uh, Amy, that's you know. Where are we? Vauxhall Bridge Road, outside the cinema. Vauxhall Bridge Road, yeah. They used to have trams here once. Used to have people, too. All empty, is it? One or two lying around. Oh, no! <laughs> get out! Get out! <laughs> What's up? I, I thought one of them moved, but it was a cat. Ah, sly things, cats. Ah. Now, I wonder what Gisela would have done. Hmm? The same as us, I dare say. Found a hotel as a base. Say, there's a big one by the station. Yes, let's try that first. Are all the buses still in the station yard? Yes, all standing there, empty. Yeah, Victoria Station. Trains for Paris and the continent. Ah, uh ah. -huh. I've taken ten minutes to do these few yards on a busy day. Mm, yeah. Hey, where are we now? Turning into Eccleston Street. Mm -hmm. oh, here's the hotel and a woman outside it. Your girl? No, she's old, but alive. Have you... You keep away. These tins are my tins. These tins are my tins. These tins well, are my I, tins. Well, I shouldn't bother with that one. It's coffee. Oh. Yeah, this one's baked beans. No. no I, I'll open them for you. Give me the tin. Give it. Were you with the party? Give me the tin. Tell me, then. Were you with the party? Yes. Led by a girl? Give me my tin. In a moment. Was there a girl who could see? Yes. Now, now give me... What happened to her? They all got ill and died, and then she went away. Oh. She wanted to take me, but I wouldn't go. Where's the point? When did this happen? Yesterday. Give me my tin. Is that all you know? Yes, my tin. Here you are. I've opened it. <laughs> What's the matter? I can tell you that, mate, even without eyes. <laughs> They've got it down here, too. Best come away. Oh, wait. Oh, oh, and I was hungry now. I don't want, I didn't. That girl was a good girl. She stayed with us. Now go. Well, this is where I came in, the university. Anyone about? Not by the look of it. There's only one truck left. Uh, maybe the one's coat that didn't Shanghai. They just, you know, pushed off. Looks like him. Mm. Oh, wait a moment. There's something pinned on the main door. Hang on, I'll go and have a look. Mm. Hey, watch out for Triffitt. I'll take the Triffitt gun. No, I won't, though. I'll take the revolver. There's someone coming. Stay there. Don't go too far. Stand still. Put your hands up. Why, it's Mr. Coker. Yes, it's me. Don't worry, I'm not armed. Well, what are you after? Another little party? No, I've had enough. They all died. So did mine. Still, we tried the wrong way. Yes. No, but it seemed right to me at any rate. I didn't realize then that the whole world must be like this. Good, think of New York. And what are you going to do now? Go after the others and eat humble pie? Have you seen the address they left behind? Uh, no, I was on my way to look at it. Tynesham Manor, Tynesham, near Devizes. We won't get there tonight. No, I was going to bed down here and move in the morning. If you take that truck, I'll take the car. Well, couldn't we take the truck alone? I've got a passenger. Alf, here's your old friend Coco. Alf! I 
Have you gone to sleep? Wake up, Alf. No, mate. I'm not asleep. Keep away from me. Where's Bill? Here. I've got it. Alf. No, you keep away. I've got it. I'll be dead by the morning. <laughs> I'll do that time to stay alive. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for all you done, Bill. Hope you find your girl. <laughs> Just give me a drink of water. Time for food? Yes. Ah, half past twelve. Probably oh, made good time, considering. What are we exactly? It's uh, about a mile before we turn off on A361 to get down to the devices. It's hot in here. We might as well sit on the grass. Watch out for trivets. I will see them coming on this downland. It's a bit of luck we've got this anti-trivet gear on board. No, it isn't. I put it there. That's why they didn't take this truck. They thought I was an alarmist. Biscuits? Ah, thanks. What's to go on them? Patty. Mm. Beer? Ah, here's the opener. Here, where'd you find these tankards? In the Athenaeum. Oh. Bishops have drunk from them. <laughs> <laughs> ah, you know, I feel better. Uh, it's going to go to London. Yes, you know, out here it might be any summer's day. Less traffic. There were an awful lot of people on this island. Don't start telling me it's all been for the best. No, but something was bound to happen sooner or later. That's what Michael Beadley said. Is he? The chapel was leading the university group. They had some interesting theories. I can't wait to see how they worked out. Polygamy, among others. Three wives per man. That uh, wouldn't work. I tried it once for a bit. What? Polygamy? Lord, no, no marriage. Took me all my time to keep one in order. <laughs> Oh, we're just about there. Should be on the other side of this wall. Just stately home, by the look of it. Now, there's the gate. Daddy. What's this, sir? Hold up. Stay where you are. Then don't point that gun at us. Is this time, Shrem Manor? Stay where you are. You really might take your finger off the trigger. Where do you come from? And how many of you are there? Just the two of us. We've come down from London to join the party. What's in the truck? Supplies. All right, pass. We'd better report for Miss Durrant. She's in the dining hall. Where's Michael Beadley? I don't know. Miss Durrant's in charge. Report to her. All right. Who's this Miss Durrant? As far as I can remember, she was the one who rebelled against polygamy. Something's wrong if she's running things. Let's find out. Cynthia, start serving the limons now. I think they've all finished their first course. Yes? What do you want? Miss Darren? Yes? We've just arrived from London. Can we have a word with you? Uh, one moment. Pam, make the holdings larger. We don't want any left over. Yes, Miss Darren. Now, what is it? Mr. Coker and I have just arrived. We want to know the form. Mr. Coker? Aren't you the man who led the raid on the university building? I am. Then I'd better let you know once and for all that we have no use for brutal methods in this community and no intention of tolerating them. What is this community? Where's Michael Beadley and all the others? They decided to move on. Why? Because we made it perfectly clear that some of us, at any rate, wish to preserve our moral standards. If you wish to stay and help us, you can. If not, please go as soon as possible. Who are all these people here? They didn't come from London, did they? They are locals. All blind? Yes. How many sighted have you? There are seven of us. What about Miss Platon, Josella Platon? Is she here? No. There's Peggy Harcourt-Smith down at the gate. Monica, Pamela, and Cynthia on duty here. Uh, Betty and Rosemary on a Triffid patrol. And uh, that's all the ones you could see. Nobody called Josella. And they're all girls here. All the sighted ones, yes. Meaning that all the men elected to go with the other party. Which is why they went and you stayed. Naturally. With the lorries to be driven and the loading to be done, it was obviously right that they should be the ones to go. Which is why you won't last for three months. I beg your pardon? If that, you haven't got a ruddy clue. How are you going to feed all these people for a start? 
We shall send parties into devices to collect supplies. And, and the plague. What? Mm, keep away from towns. There are plenty of village stores in the neighborhood. Enough to last you for a year. Perhaps. And a year after that and the next year? What do you do then? How will you live in ten years' time, even if the trivets don't get you first? We shall trust to Providence. Yeah, you'll do better to start building some sort of flour mill now. The wheat will be ready for harvesting in a few weeks. For heaven's sake, can't you see you've got to change your whole way of thinking or go under? I can assure you that we propose to think as we have always thought. If you disagree with our ideas, you're welcome to go and join Mr. Beadley and his friends. Where are they? Did you wish to go to? I want to find Miss Platon. Where do they go? I really couldn't say. Well, surely they left an address? If they did, I don't remember it. I, uh, I have an idea it was in Dorset, somewhere in the Beaminster direction. Now, if you'll excuse me, there's a great deal to be done. Monica, will you stack the plates, please? Then some of the train girls can get busy watching them. Yeah. Well, how far is Beaminster? Where are we? Steeple Honey. Where's that? In Somerset. Oh, it's pretty. To look at. What the blazes has happened to everyone, Bill? I mean, I can understand them getting disease in the big towns, but you'd expect people to be alive out here. There have been accidents and suicides. Well, not all that many, surely. We've come 50 miles now without seeing a living creature except a few sheep. And the dickens of a lot of triffid. Oh, yes, sir. Uh... More and more of them. You've noticed that, too. Why is it? I've been wondering. I don't know. Why? Why? Is there someone there? Well, we've broken our duck as far as people go. Over there in the pub. Upstairs window. Oh, yes. Can you get downstairs? Coming now. He's alive. Why aren't the others? Oh, he kept his head. They lost theirs. I don't know. We may as well take a drink from him. Where are you? Coming over. Look out. Triffid. The Triffid gun. Here. <coughs> Got it. Is the chap dead? Yes. Look, it had rooted itself in his garden, just in reach of the door. Almost as though it was waiting for him. Almost. But it couldn't have been, could it, I? I mean, they've got no intelligence. They're plants. A friend of mine who knew a lot about them wasn't so sure. He thought they'd talk to each other. Do you think so? I don't know. He also said that sight was the only advantage that mankind had over Triffids. Yes, but what would be the idea of killing people? They, they can't eat flesh. If they wait long enough, they can drink it just like any other plant. Thank you. I'll have a large brandy after that little thought. No, I won't. Here come two more. Let's get out of it. This! Come on! Beaminster welcomes careful drivers. Oh, let's hope somebody else does, too. Crack you, who's that? The character in that doorway. Stay where you are and don't move. What's the idea? Doggy, dog? How many of you are there? Only us two. We're harmless. All right, you can get down. How are you, Alice? All right. But who are you? Where do you come from? Have you, uh, have you any gen? What's happened? Do you mean you don't know? Well, only that we were all in a car smash a week ago and taken to the cottage hospital. When we came round the next morning, everybody else was blind. Oh, my name's Stephen Brennell, and I'm supposed to be a stockbroker. Uh, this is Vera Paul, a girlfriend of mine, and mm -hmm. this is uh, Sid Farrer, who used to run a radio shop. Pleased to meet you. My name's Bill Mason. This is Jack Coker. I don't know. What about the others? Well, they're up at the manor. They broke their legs. Who? The others who went in the accident. But haven't you seen a large party? A man called Michael Beadley's leaving them. No, not a sign. We've been all round, uh, 15 or 20 miles radius. Oh, my boy, we've been ahead. Miss Durrant. Oh, yes, sir. Look, supposing you come back to the manor with us. Then we can all put each other into our respective pictures. Oh, fair enough. Lead on. Can you see outside the machine gun so that it fires from this window covering the drive? And a mortar here. Deal with anybody beyond the shrubbery where we can't see them. Well, it takes care of this side of the house. But why? Well, there's bound to be trouble sooner or later when stocks run low in the cities. We've been expecting gangs out any day. You haven't seen the cities. They're emptier than the countryside. What? Do you mean nobody in them? Yes, darling, that's exactly what he means. 
Well, that only shows what I've been saying all along. We've got to wait for the Americans. What Americans? Well, they're bound to come sooner or later. I mean, you know, like in the war and the food parcels and all that. They won't be coming this time. How do you know? Well, because they were all out watching the comet or whatever it was as well. They're as badly off as we are. Maybe worse. They had more triffids and less canned food in these deep freeze days. But all the same, they are the Americans, aren't they? I mean, they're bound to come sooner or later. Look, you've got to get it into your head. There are no Americans. But there must be Americans. It's no good. You'll never convince her. Here, have a drink, darling, and keep quiet, eh? I believe it, though. That's why there is nothing on the short wave. It's a bit paralyzing. What the blazes do we do about it? Can't we just stay here and wait? No, we really well can't. I don't swear at the girl. No. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm have to blow my top a bit. Ask Bill here. He's noisy but harmless. Oh. Yes, he was being noisy that saved me. I never told you that, did I? On the night of the comet, I was down in Rotherhide doing a bit of organizing in a strike. The police turned up, so I hid in a cellar all night. Crime pays. All the same. If we don't stay here, where can we go? My suggestion is Tynesham, where we've just come from. Why? Oh, I know you've got the girl to look for, Bill. That does give you a reason for swanning about the country. But for the rest of us, there's no point in staying here until our supplies run out. But that'll take some time. Yes, but by that time, we must be self-supporting. Well, there's some good farmland around these parts. But there aren't enough of us to farm it. Well, I don't know. We might make a go. It's not good enough just to make a go. You've got to realize that this will last forever, that you've got to make entirely new lives. Oh? Look, one of the things man must have if he's to progress is leisure. Leisure. Time to learn, to study, to experiment. Well, that's true. There are only six of us here. We may get one or two more in, but even that won't give us enough. Well, it means that every single person will have to work all day just to keep himself alive. Well, there's, so uh, me. there's lots of machinery lying around. Yeah, but in a few years' time, there won't be any petrol or oil. We'll have to find horses and breed from them and learn how to shoe them. And later, we'll have to learn how to smelt iron and make horseshoes. Some job. And when the candles give out, we'll have to live in the dark, unless we've discovered how to make fresh ones out of tallow. Candles are made of wax. And I what? do know that. Mm, and wax is made of paraffin. Now, we got a chance to live on capital for a few years, but if we don't take the opportunity it gives us to, to learn, we should become peasants. Our children will be savages, and theirs will be back in the Stone Age. Yes, but how are we going to um, Tynesham help? Well, there's more than 60 people there. Most of them are blind, but they can be trained to help. We'll be a society growing and developing instead of a desperate garrison with nothing to look forward to. Are you on? Yes, I am. Me too. Is it a very small place, this time, Shun? Oh, it's on all the best American maps. Oh. <laughs> well, let's have a drink on it. Miss Tarrant will be surprised. <laughs> if she doesn't like it, she can go and dance with the trivet. Have you had much trouble with them around here? Oh, we certainly have. Ah, but we've found something that really scares them off. Oh? Yes. When we were collecting our weapon supply at Bovington, we picked up a couple of flamethrowers. Ah. One tickle with them, and they keep well away. Just as well. You can shoot at them all day, and they don't mind. Not any more than a tree would. Well, that's what they are. Oh, I know, but you, you sort of forget it when you see them sitting around waiting to take a smack at you. There's half a dozen in every farmyard around here. They park themselves in the manure heaps. Yes, I look forward to putting in a little flamethrower practice. It sounds as though they were getting you down, Bill. Funny, really. I used to regard them as part of my job. Oh, they were odd, yes, but no odder than some other hybrids we produced. But now I'm beginning to realize just what it was we were bringing into the world for money. Well, there's one thing about Tynesham. It's, it's more open up there. You can see for miles across the downs, and they can't creep up on you so much. What's the matter, Bill? The darn, something Josanna said. Your girlfriend? Yes, back in London, she said something about some friends of hers who lived on the Sussex Downs near Poolborough. That was where she suggested we might go. I bet that's where she is. Unless what? No, nothing. Oh, I know. Unless she's caught the plague and died. She might have done. But all the same, you're starting for Poolborough in the morning. Ah, oh, don't blame you, chum. In fact, I wish you luck. That was episode four of The Day of the Triffids, a serial for broadcasting in six episodes by Giles Cooper from the novel by John Wyndham, with Patrick Barr as Bill Mason. Production for the BBC 
is by Peter Watts.